Ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much for joining us on this session on Japan. Now we have 45 minutes um, and we have three great panelists. Of course, Japan's Prime Minister Shinzo Abe has a bold plan, a very bold plan. It's a shock therapy for an economy that's been stagnant for 20 years and was overtaken by China in 2010 as the world's second largest. Abenomics, as the doctrine is known, departs from the piecemeal measures of previous leaders and, of course, focuses uh, on these powerful political constituency. So Abe tells voters that the strong economic medicine he has pursued for more than three years will work. So we have a great panel to discuss the benefits, what more can be done, and the things that need to be stepped up. Mr. Akira Amar, Minister of Economic Revitalization and Minister for Economic and Fiscal, Plan, Fiscal Policy of Japan, thank you so much for joining us. Takeshi Ninami, President and Chief Executive Officer, member of the board at Suntory Hold. Thank you. And, of course, Adam Posen of the Peterson Institute. Guys, it's um, exciting because Abenomics has been in the works for three years. Minister, would you like to start and just give us an overview on what you think has worked but what we need to accelerate? Hmm. Hey, I know. この3年間のアベノミクスの成果をあのできるだけ具体的な事例でお話をしたいと思います。第2 え、6つの障害、え、経済活動の障害物がありました。え、エンダーカ、ジョンエンダーカ、ハイバリューオブザイエン、エンダーカ、ハイコベリアン、え、そしてジュビエ、ジュビオキョーテン、オクレイ。それ
再生されるこの臨床例はもう出ました重度の心不全の患者はですね心臓移植をまあなければ未来がなかったですけどその人はもう心筋が再生してです、ね、日常生活を送っていますそれからこれも世界初ですけど、ね、iPS 細胞を使ってですね、えー、あの目の老化によるあの非常に難しい病気で加齢による黄斑変性という病気がありますこれを iPS 細胞で網膜を移植してこれも世界で初めてでありますそれからエネルギー改革は申し上げたとおりですそれから水素社会の幕開けでですねおそらく世界で初めてですね量産型のですね燃料電池の自動車トヨタの未来のもうもう走り出してたくさん走り出しています農業改革は60年後 PPPPFI はですねこのフランスのバンシュエアポートはですね関空関西空港の大阪空港ですねこの運営権を日本の企業と一緒に取得しました2兆円規模の話にありますまだたくさんつくもいいですか Can I go, go on a little? There are many specific cases. A, a little bit, and, and, good then, and then we'll. Sorry, go. Hi. えーとえー、コーポレートガバナンス、社外取締役を選任する企業は一,一文上で9割以上、もうほとんどです。だスチュアブルシップコード、えー、日本の代表的な投資家が、投資機関ですね、スチュアブルシップコード活動を充実化している、えーえー、等々ですね。それから、これから何をしていくか。えー、これはあの第4次産業革命に日本が最初から取り組んでいくといことですね。IoT、ビッグデータ、AI、人工知能。IoT は推進コンソーミシアムができました。えー、世界中の会社、Google、Amazon、Apple、IBM、GE、Microsoft、Cisco、シングル、みんな一緒に参加をしています。えーまあ、具体的に言いますとですね、えー、例えばその自動走行、オリンピックで自動走行の移動サービスのカウンターなんです。ドローン、3年以内にドローンを使った荷物配送可能です。それからロボット、ロボットスーツ、春はですね、病院とか介護施設で導入されて、建設現場でも導入されて、それからですね、小松製作場はですね、プログラミングされたドローンを飛ばして、立体的にあのの測量をしてですねそれからプログラミングそれを受けたプログラミングされた自動ブルトーダーが入ってですね全部整地しちゃう人の手を使わないで全部できるそういうようなことがどんどんできていますそれでは大臣はこの3年の国会で取り組んでいる国会で取り組んでいる国会で取り組んでいる国会で取り組んでいる国会で取り組んでいる国会で取り組んでいる国会で今。Of the Japanese economy from negative to positive. But、uh, there are lots of things uh, that, that, uh, that need to be done. And because we have not、uh, got out of the、uh, deflation yet completely, and、uh, people have still inertia in their minds. So I strongly believe that、uh, it takes at least、um, three to five years to see the efficacies of the.、Uh, Policies implemented already by the government. So it's been, I think, a, a, a positive, but、uh, you know, we have to see, let's say, three to five years. But、uh, definitely, efficacies have, emerging, have been emerging. So the、uh, prerequisite thing is definitely the long term and the steady government like the current one. And、um, uh, to do so, then we can get rid of deflation completely. And we must build the uh,、um, solid economy that is resilient to the,、uh, um, I think, a negative impact of the world economy, like、um, a gross recession of China. And、uh, to enable sustainable growth, 
We must create a domestic demand, definitely domestic demand, by addressing three issues further, more. One, wages, two, labor, and three, investment. So um, I think um, about uh, labor, um, both gentlemen will touch upon definitely creating expectation of continuous wage hike is the most important thing for Japan to raise consumption. That's a long-term agenda for Japan. I think a positive sign has been coming up, but still consumption is weak. So we have three points to address. One is definitely continuous wage hike. And two, increase in the number of households of double income. That will be created by the, uh, having women to, to, to work much more. I think that's underway. And third, this is a kind of technical decrease of insurance premium to be charged uh, from the individual payroll. That is now reaching as much as 5% of the uh, payroll. That is very important to increase disposable income. So this is technical, but this is very important. Let me touch upon um, and explain the continuous wage hike. Um, this is underway, but the labor share of national income has dropped. Well, we corporations are reporting record highs and the profits. So, and the most CEOs are still hesitant uh, to, to invest, to pay more to wages because uh, we feel still un understandably skeptical of the uh, sustainable growth. So I support the current uh, activity of the Abe administration to pressure business to, to increase the wages. But in the exchange, in the exchange, of the uh, decrease of the tax, I mean, corporate tax rate to the you know, mid-20s uh, gradually. So that's important. And another thing is a definitely investment opportunity. Um, I just uh, skipped the labor, but the investment opportunity in the domestic market, definitely we have to work on a much more uh, uh, effort to the, uh, 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 the deregulate, I mean, bedrock regulations. And we have the... Uh, Lots of opportunity, which is a potential, like uh, our healthcare industry, including uh, 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 healthier longevity. I mean, longer healthier longevity. That's a preventive medicine. And uh, as, as the minister mentioned, uh, uh, IPS and the nutritional products and the robotics to the elderly care and maybe clean energy. So those are potential areas. And we may be able to, to uh, definitely, perhaps, I would say definitely, we can make use of the uh, fourth industrial revolution for that. Database, uh, I mean, big data analysis and AI. They will be playing a key role for Japan to, to pick up its uh, opportunity for investments. I'd like to talk more, but uh, unlike the council meeting, I can't talk. <laughs> I said, Professor Takenaka knows. I talk too much. Huh? <laughs> you'll, you'll have plenty of time to actually ask also uh, questions to the minister. Adam Posen, you have always been a big believer that abonomics will work. But actually, given what's happened on the markets in the last two weeks, given that we don't really know what China's policy on Yuan is, given that the oil price may continue to go further, how difficult really will it be for abonomics to work and, and for defense? Inflation to stop. Well, Francine, uh, as you say, after 20 years of being a critic of Japanese policies, it's been my pleasure for the last three years to be a cheerleader. And I think, <laughs> you know, I, I get paid the same amount either way, but I think it's um, very important to just put in global context the structural reforms that my colleagues just mentioned. Adding 850,000 people, women, to the workforce is enormous. That's enough to offset shrinkage of the workforce for three or four years. That is a huge long-term change. Some of those women are part-time, but that's the way we learned from the Nordics and from Europe, elsewhere in Europe. That's how you keep women in the workforce, is you allow flexible arrangements. This is the single biggest thing that they could do, and they've done it. Corporate governance, again, it's getting lost. As you mentioned, Francine, the markets are extremely skeptical, but they're not just skeptical in Japan. They're skeptical everywhere. And so some of the corporate reforms that my friend mentioned, as well as the minister, are not getting as much credit as they do. But if you think about Toshiba, Olympus, these other famous cases, they could never have happened in Japan without the changing climate to being more concerned about external directors and external forces. So to me, when you talk about the uphill battle for Abenomics, which is true, I think the issue is what's been a huge achievement of the Abe government 
and the Bank of Japan, frankly, is that the problems besetting Japan now are the same ones besetting the US and Europe. Mm. It used to be Japan had all the same problems as everybody else, plus its own internal damaging problems. Clearly, there's still more reform to be done. But what you're facing in Japan now is this disengagement of the real economy from the nominal, which is what we're seeing in Europe and in the US, that you get growth, you get full employment, you still don't get inflation. And the disengagement of wages from productivity, which I think throughout the Davos conference people have said is the dark side mm -hmm. of the fourth industrial revolution. Mm -hmm. And so I completely support the idea of the continual wage hike in just one more sentence. Olivier Blanchard, the former chief economist of the IMF, who's now with us at Peterson and I, co-authored an aggressive plan encouraging the government in, to be much more aggressive about raising wages and trying to create a 70s-style price wage cycle that leading companies do give wage hikes and they pass on the price hikes as a return. And you should be going for a much higher wage hike. Mm. And this is not just to get out of deflation, but to make explicit what I think is implicit here. That's the only way you're going to stop the fiscal problem in Japan. You have to buy time by creating some nominal growth that further exceeds real growth, or else it'll be too big. And so the final thing I would say is, this is where I disagree with my friend and the government. They should withhold the corporate tax bill until the wages are delivered on a commitment from the corporation. <laughs> they should not bring it to the diet until these very fat, profitable corporations share with the workers. How'd you like it? <laughs> uh, Minister, a, a reaction to maybe that last Good. point? あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あ
promoting a structural reform in Japan to create, uh, as I mentioned earlier, domestic demand, not relying on uh, too much export from Japan. And uh, we have the potential demand like uh, uh, health care because of the aging society, which is a social need. And that needs uh, lots of, uh, you know, uh, private investments. But uh, we feel so scared because it's run by publicly, mostly. And there, there, there is, a, you know, invisible, you know, regulation we feel. And definitely we have to promote um, uh, our businesses in, the, in Japan itself. But uh, as uh, the minister mentioned, still we have inertia uh, in the bottom of the heart. So that's a chicken and egg issue. The government elites or the private sectors indeed. But uh, we have to have a target. The, the, at the end of the, by the end of the 2018, that means the three years from now, the private sectors have to lead the economy. By then, it's a shame for a business leader to say, but uh, we need definitely a strong initiative from uh, economics, I mean, the uh, administration, much more than before. That's why I mentioned the resilient economy for Japan from, uh, you know, bad effect from uh, the world economy. So we have to, you know, expedite our structural reform. Sorry, proceed. No, go ahead. No, I was just going to say, I mean, it is very heartening always to hear a business leader from Japan like Tadeshi, Takeshi, excuse me, um, talk about domestic demand in a serious way. I mean, and, and, and what the last several years have proven for Japan and for Germany and for a whole bunch of places is it's not just the Americans whine about trade deficits. It really is for your own stability and security a good thing to have a domestic base of demand. And again, what I want to emphasize is, and this is a very Davos thing, but I think it's right, that the kinds of things that Takeshi is talking about in terms of private sector investment in healthcare, dealing with aging, these are common challenges across the rich world. And we have to think now, in addition, what we can do at a global level to free up long-term investment, infrastructure investment. We had a very good session off the record yesterday, including some Japanese mm. leaders, on how regulations at the global level are interfering with appetite for infrastructure investment, for major investment. But I also, going back to something that Minister Mari was key in, I also think even if we're worried about domestic reform, the trade deal, the Trans-Pacific Partnership is huge. It's had a huge effect symbolically and in money terms on agriculture in Japan. If and when the US Congress passes it, which they will, it's just a question of when, every Japanese family is going to get a tax cut effectively because the cost of food is going to go down. And so always remember, and this is what I try to tell the people in the U.S., a trade deal really isn't about opening markets. Mm -hmm. It's about transforming the economies that are part of the deal. Adam, a quick question also on monetary policy. Governor yeah. Kuroda came on Bloomberg TV for half an hour yesterday. He spoke in a panel this morning. And, of course, he says, look, he's not seeing the effect of worldwide deflationary pressures yet. Uh, we're expecting the BOJ to, to act or not ne next week. But he's suggesting, look, he has more firepower and he's ready to do almost whatever it takes. Does he have one shot? This is what the markets believe, right? That he has one yeah. shot to get it right? Or can he fire multiple shots? No, I, th I think the markets are in general at the moment getting it wrong. And with respect to the Bank of Japan, I think they're definitely getting it wrong. I, I talk with Governor Kuroda, I'm a big fan. Um, mm. I think it would be probably a mistake to do more right now because it's not gonna have an immediate effect. If it's a global panic and a global deflationary pressure from energy prices and a global problem, doing a little more QE in Japan is not going to make that much difference. It's not, if the yen were to go skyrocketing, that's different. Minister Mari's right. The Abinaux came in with a yen that was vastly overvalued. It's not now. And so it's not he's out of ammo. It's just you don't want to do something that you make a big deal out of, the markets make a big deal out of, and two months later you find there hasn't been much effect. I think the central banks would be wise to just ride out this panic and wait. Minister, how do, how do you view the markets? The, the topics entered a, a bear market as a CEO, as a policymaker, as a minister. Do you need to ignore the market, or do you, do you need to, to try and understand exactly the angst that they have? Well, up until recently, G7 の影響力が落ちて
G20 とかですね、要するに新興国の経済が世界を引っ張る時代になったということをよく言われたんですね。で G7 の影響力どんどんしてる。しかし、ここへ来てはですね、やっぱりあの新興国経済がほとんど今、あの頭打ちでダメになってますで。で、倹約やっぱり先進国がやるっていうですね、時に来てると思うんです。だからまさにですね、えー、その、G7 サミットが今年は東京・伊勢志摩という。向こうメディアのところで行われます。議長は安倍議長です。でそこでですね、先進国が世界経済を牽引していくっていうことをですね、しっかり発信して、その市場にですね、発信していくことって大事なんだと思います。きっと安倍総理はそのことを考えになっていらっしゃいます。And investors are concerned about the sales tax increase for the second time. Um, what, what are your thoughts? あの法律はもう通ってますから2回目を、well, まあ、やらなくちゃいけないんですけどしかしその1回目の消費税を引き上げた時にやっぱりその消費の下押し,下押し圧力というのは相当大きくてですね大変なダメージを受けましたでまだこういう状況下でそのもう一度引き上げるのかっていうのは議論が確かにありますただ法律は通っていますから今政府の公式スタンスはですねえそれができるような環境を来年の4月まで全力で作るということが公式見解です。To implement the 2% increase of the consumption tax, because the definitely consumption tax affected, I mean, 3% increase of the two years ago affected the economy a lot. We have to analyze it you know, carefully. But、uh, having said that,、uh, I'd like to support the increase because we have to show the world that our economy is fine to be able to increase 2%. But the reality is so hard. So we have to pump up the economy, you know, stimulate the economy. As soon as possible, because the world economy is so weak and weaker than we'd expect it. So, again,、uh, we have a potential demand because of the aging population, which needs more health care. So, that means p r i v a t e l i z e I mean, private、uh, health care services should be provided. So, that we are almost at bay to make、uh, you know, movements toward、uh, you know, health care, those areas which we have been talking about for many years. But this is the last chance, but a good thing for Japan because we have to make a move. And the economics is doing that. I support that. But, and plus,、uh, another factor I should raise we are in the, in the situation of acute labor shortage. This is quite rare among student developed countries like Japan and the US. You, know, you see, the,、uh, almost everybody is hired. And we have to increase l a b o r s One woman, senior citizen. Third, I'd like to address the foreign workers. Now we have to be serious about it. We have the、uh, foreign training system for, as, a, as a, the、uh, foreign aid, but we can alter the laws to be able to extend their stay to, in Japan from the current three years to five, for example. That's underway, as a matter of fact. And after five years, they can be eligible to, to apply to the、uh, permanent residence, like a US uh, you know, green card. So, this kind of a new thing to, to, in, to be impactful, to, bring, uh, to, to solve the、uh, issues, that kind of things are needed before the increase of 2% of consumption to, to provide a, you know, positive momentum to the market and、uh, to the people. Yeah,、um, last year、uh, I had the pleasure to be on the Japan panel as well, and I said that for the future of Japan, It had to get over being either racist or sexist. That is, it had to either allow immigration, foreign workers, because no, they don't like the word immigration, or women. And I thought I wouldn't be invited back. And I think it's a sign of how far things have come that Takeshi's saying this and I'm invited back.、Um, but joking aside, I, as important as that is, I don't fully agree on the postponement of the consumption tax hike. Or rather, you can only postpone it. If you get the inflation up. Because the problem is, Japan is never going to be Greece, it's never going to even be Italy, 
it has domestic savings, it has its own currency, but the problem is, especially with an aging society, you have a certain amount of government spending you need to do, you have a tax base that's slightly shrinking, and if you're not careful, there can be a sudden jump in interest and debt payments. And what that won't destroy the Japanese economy, but it will force a very rapid either tax hike or budget cut. And you want to avoid that. So if you're not going to do, it's like I said, if you're not going to do immigration, you have to do women, preferably both. If you're not going to do the consumption tax hike, then you damn well better get nominal growth much more up, because that's the only way you're going to buy time and space to avoid that kind of harsh thing on the budget. Minister, how will you revitalize the, the labor force? Do you think womenomics will definitely work? And a comment on, on foreign workers. あ、ウィリアン、アンクシャスとワークえ、ロッパックマン、ロッパック Women's uh, participation in the labor market, uh, as I said, increased by nearly <laughs> 1 million. We've increased the child care facilities. え、生児休業給付ですね。自分の力3分の2 あの、安倍政権が言ってるからまあしょうがないからちょっと役員の女性入れなきゃとかですね。そういうところってあるんですよ。でも、でもね、この間あの、大型商業施設で一番うまくいってるっていうのは、三井不動産のララポート。ララポ
good managers, especially service sectors like uh, healthcare, you know, retail businesses, we will see good managers because they know customers more, more than you know, us. And uh, child care, we need good managers. And uh, over years, we will see good managers. So that means uh, you know, necessity from the business uh, promotes uh, naturally uh, female workers to be management. But uh, over more than uh, five, maybe six years, population in the organization is a, a key thing for us to promote. So, so you think we will be able to see whether womenomics works in five years from now? Yes, that's right. It's in underway, definitely, by strong right. leadership of both business and the government. Yeah. But uh, all of a sudden, can we put the senior position? Well, they should have more experience. And they should, uh, you know, the, why are, are you promoted? Is that because of women? It's not really good. Should have experience, should have knowledge, should have capability. So we have to increase the population in the organization, just like a company. Let me, let me give a bit of a global perspective on this issue. Um, the Peterson Institute, we're about to issue a study. It'll come out first week of February. We've done a snapshot of the entire corporate world around the world in 2014. We have, have 21,000 companies in our data set, 91 countries. And it speaks to this issue, and I'll just be very brief. First thing is, Japan, Korea, East Asia in general, does far underperform in terms of representation mm -hmm. of women. I know the minister, I know Takeshi, you're not denying that, but it just, it stands out that if you control for income, what industries they're in, all these things, Japan and Korea are way behind. Second, and this partially supports what Takeshi was saying, we find that there is huge variation across countries, across businesses, in profitability associated with how many women you have in management. So if you have a lot of women in management in general, in C-suites, you do get higher profitability, controlling for a whole host of factors. However, it's not connected with boards. Mm -hmm. So this sort of supports, I don't want to fully endorse what Takeshi was saying, but it broadly supports Takeshi's mm -hmm. point. Our interpretation of the data mm -hmm. is that forcing women onto boards or Encouraging women on the board certainly does no harm. We don't see any evidence that it's bad for profitability, but it doesn't have the effect. What you want to see is a pipeline mm. and the kinds of things the minister was talking about, an environment that's a good working world for women. So you have lots of women there and they make their way through and they're part of the leadership. And that has a clear effect on profitability. And so without getting into issues of is it affirmative action, do they need experience, there is strong evidence that it's got to be about not just putting women at the top, it's got to be about getting women supported to be senior workers. And in Japan in particular, but in, throughout the Western world, I, by Western I mean Japan, market-oriented, rich world, it's about paternity leave as well as maternity leave, it's about flexible for women in childbearing age, it's about getting women back into management if they come out for a bit. These are the policies that matter. Yes, um, corporations are, have been advancing the uh, policy to give the uh, you know, maternity leave and uh, uh, such as the uh, child care uh, uh, benefits uh, by giving the, uh, some uh, 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 subsidies. I think uh, I want to mention that uh, we like to have more, I mean, uh, you know, increase in the number, I mean, number of child care facility, but it's run mostly publicly. We need to bring in a private experience and the knowledge and the managers and most managers uh, could, you know, can be a uh, uh, female. So we have to develop a new system in society to support the women to work. That is still locked behind, though the economic supports a lot. Yes. But uh, yes. we need more. So if we, need, we have more women to work, then more facilities needed. So it's a uh, chicken and egg, you know, always, uh, you know. So I think it's advancing, but we need more child care, but that should be run by private initiative. I mean, public initiative, I mean, private initiative. Uh, Minister, we're at the beginning of 2016. The IMF has said again that more reforms need to be put in place for abonomics to work. What is the one or maybe two key reforms that you will work on in the next 12 months to either implement more quickly or to, to accelerate the kind of engine of these reforms? Yeah, no, oh. 
毎年毎年ですね、改革の進捗管理をしています。えー、どこまで、えー、この一年やらなければならないっていうことです、ね。いわば進捗の測る物差しを使ってですねそれをしっかり検証してやってますそれから2020年のオリンピックに向けてですね具体的なそのショーケースをいくつも持っています例えば先ほど申し上げましたけど2020のオリンピックにはですね自動走行が全部あの大会運営をですね移動を取り仕切れるですね、あるいは3年以内にドローンを使ってです、ねえーえー、この物の配送ができるとか、ね、スタートできるとかです、ね、あるいは水素社会を世界に先駆けてです、ね、日本は2020年までにかなり,かなり完成形にしていきます、ね、具体的なショーケースを提示してそれに向けて進んでいくように。えー From the uh, special account, which has the already six,、uh, $60 billion dollars without uh, no uh, uh, destination. Definitely, we have to mobilize the talent to revitalize the economy. So, I would not say、uh, we can easily fire people.、Mm -hmm. I do not support, but we have to change the laws to create the mobility of labor. So, that's the challenge for the government, but it's a prerequisite to revitalize the economy. Adam, in terms of timeline, in, in two years, will we know if this policy has worked? Well, it, we will know already that the policy has worked, as the minister said, as Takeshi said, and as Governor Kuroda said. The real economy in Japan is actually cycling upright. What we won't know for another two years is whether this is sufficient to make Japan resilient to external shocks, to make Japan back in control of its fiscal destiny, to make Japan a solid ongoing partner in, in Asia, which was always Prime Minister Abe's motivation. I'm hopeful it will, but you said one line. One line is you need multi-year wage increases in indexing if necessary. Minister, you've also had some negative press, some ne negative comments on the press. When will you respond to what's been said? あ私自身の話、えーね、週刊誌報道を私と私と秘書に関して、えー、大変お騒がせをいたしております。私自身もう少し明るい気持ちでここに来たかったんですけども、えー、カメラに囲まれてまいますね。海に囲まれています。ええー、しっかりあの、えー、調査を今かけておりまして、まあ、来週中にはですね、えー、何らかの会見ができるようにしたいというふうに思っています。At the moment, you don't expect it to impact your at the moment you don't expect it to impact your willingness to do reform or economics in any way. あの安倍内閣の重要閣僚の一人としてですね、えー、そういうご迷惑をおかけしているっていうのは本当にあの自覚した思いがあります。えー、いずれにしてもあのもここは私の。関数スキャンダルの発信をする場ではありませんのでですねきちんと日本に帰ってですね調査の結果についてですねその時点でお話ができるということはしっかり説明をしていきたいと思います。